Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The U.S. Air Force's capabilities extend well beyond the atmosphere. When a satellite needs to get into space, the Air Force has an ingenious method to get them into orbit quickly and safely. A collaboration of the U.S. Air Force with DARPA in 2011 led to the Airborne Launch Assist Space Access, or ALASA. This program was developed to actualize that a jet, rather than a rocket, could transport 100-pound satellites into low Earth orbit. Once at a high altitude, the jet would release a vehicle that would carry the satellite to the desired location. At $1 million or less per launch, this method was inexpensive and faster than the traditional rocket launch. Unfortunately, the ALASA program was canceled in 2015 before the first flight could take place. It turned out that the vehicle carrying the satellite from the jet was powered by a propulsion system that was too unstable to be safe. So after two explosions, DARPA scrapped the plan. The primary way the Air Force and the newly created Space Force launch satellites into space is by rocket. This 2016 launch of the Delta IV Heavy had a classified payload, meaning what the rocket was carrying was top secret. United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy rocket cannon carrying the NRO L-65 mission to the National Reconnaissance Office. However, it's well known that the Delta IV can lift roughly 60,000 pounds to low Earth orbit. MEQ perform post lift off manner to go to the partial thrust mode. Roger. Repeat per second. The Delta IV rocket was developed by the United Launch Alliance. A company that is a joint venture between Lockheed Martin and Boeing. ULA also created the Atlas V rocket. Going within expected parameters which regularly takes up DOD satellites, such as an experimental missile warning satellite earlier this year. However, these launches are incredibly expensive, costing hundreds of millions of dollars each. That's due to the fact that no part of these rockets can be reused after a launch. Each one must be built from scratch. In 2023, ULA hopes to complete the maiden voyage of its Vulcan Centaur rocket. which could mean the ULA would charge the DOD 70% less for future satellite launches. That's because the Vulcan will have components that can be floated back to Earth and reused. Currently, SpaceX's reusable rocket, the Falcon 9, is the most inexpensive way to launch satellites. for launch. Minus five, four, three, two, one. Here, we see the very first Falcon 9 launch in 2015, an exciting and historic achievement for aeronautics. 
Visual propulsion is not real. This rocket became the very first to deploy satellites into low Earth orbit, then safely re-land back on Earth. Reusing the most expensive parts of the rocket, in turn, drives down the cost of space access. Falcon 9 is named for the Star Wars Millennium Falcon and the nine Merlin engines that propel it into the stratosphere. Those engines generate more than 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Thanks to rocket-grade kerosene and liquid oxygen as rocket propellants in a gas-generated power cycle. To land, Falcon 9 makes use of its four hypersonic grid fins positioned at the base of the interstage. They reorient it for re-entry. While not every Falcon 9 launch and landing has been perfect, SpaceX prides itself on a success rate of more than 97%, making it one of the most reliable launch providers ever. This is the Falcon 9. Once in orbit, a satellite faces the threat of anti-satellite weapons. Commonly called ASAT weapons. They are long-range missiles normally used to destroy another country's satellite. Stand by. Data building. Zooming in on the grid. Whiskey Charlie 6. Check sources. Intel confirmed. Probable ASAT launch. Yeah, two potato release. This is Sivers. ASAT launch from Grid Whiskey Charlie 6. I'll copy. Copy. ASAT launch. Initiated there. The US, China, and Russia are believed to be the only countries currently in possession of these space weapons. In wartime, ASATs can destroy communication abilities and sabotage a country's military operations. Of course, ASATs aren't able to reach all satellites. Those in high orbit or above the range of 12,500 miles are more difficult to target. Before ASATs became prevalent, the U.S. government tried using aircraft to take down satellites. The ASM-135 ASAT program started in the 1950s. However, it wasn't until 1985 that Major General Doug Pearson successfully flew an Air Force F-15A, dubbed Celestial Eagle, to an altitude of 39,000 feet and shot down a satellite using the ASM-135 ASAT missile. The target was an obsolete 2,000-pound solar laboratory launched in 1979. The purpose of this program was to prove fighter jets as capable of carrying anti-satellite missiles to destroy an enemy satellite. Pearson is still the first and only pilot to shoot down a satellite successfully. And I will tell you on show day, the Friday the 13th, 1985, pretty much everything that could go right did go right. As it expands its capabilities in space, the U.S. Air Force has historically partnered with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA. While not a military agency specifically, NASA is a government agency responsible for the civil space program as well as aeronautics and space research. One of the most memorable moments of the partnership between the Air Force and NASA was the final journey of the Space Shuttle Endeavour.
which took to the skies one last time in 2012 on the back of a 747. People lined the streets to catch a glimpse of the shuttle piggybacking on the jumbo jet as it flew from Kennedy Space Center to Los Angeles. California is a fitting end for the endeavor. That is where she and all of her sister ships were built for the NASA Space Shuttle program. That program, which lasted for three decades, was also assisted by the U.S. Air Force. Rescue wing airmen served as guardians of the astronauts during all space shuttle missions. They were tasked to rescue the astronauts if a contingency were to occur, either on the ground or upon takeoff. The Air Force has also been essential in the transportation of NASA equipment, like the massive Webb telescope. Launched in 2021, it's the best eye we have in space. Currently in orbit around the sun, the Webb telescope's high resolution and sensitivity allow it to view objects too faint or distant for the Hubble Space Telescope to see. Here, it shows the telescope being loaded into a military C-5 Super Galaxy transport aircraft at Ellington Field Joint Reserve Base in Houston, Texas. Only the Air Force had a plane large enough to fit the massive container with the telescope inside. And here at the Mansfield Lom Regional Airport in Mansfield, Ohio, Ohio Air National Guard helped to load NASA Super Guppy aircraft with the Orion space capsule. As you can see with its unusual shape, the Super Guppy is used to carry oversized cargo. On this mission, it flew from Ohio to Kennedy Space Center. That's where the Orion would continue to prepare for NASA's Artemis mission. The Artemis program aims to enable human exploration of the Moon and Mars. The U.S. Navy is also essential to the Artemis program. Watch as Navy personnel and NASA's landing and recovery team practice removing the Orion spacecraft in the Pacific after a hypothetical splashdown from space. At roughly 23,000 pounds, the Orion is about twice the size of the Apollo capsules. While the first manned launch of the Orion is expected in November of this year, what will happen once the astronauts return to Earth has been practiced again and again. What happens after splashdown requires extreme skill and speed to ensure the astronauts who will eventually be inside this capsule are safe. Watch here as Navy divers hook a tow line onto the Orion. Next, they slowly and carefully pull it through the waters of the Pacific.
It then goes into the underhull loading zone of the USS San Diego. The Navy has also had practice recovering the Orion closer to shore in a more controlled environment. This video was shot in 2013 at the Naval Station in Norfolk, Virginia. Watch as the spacecraft was floated away from the USS Arlington, allowing the NASA and Navy teams to demonstrate and evaluate the recovery process. including using the hardware and practicing the kind of communication needed to maneuver the Orion through the water. During the test, the U.S. Navy dive team checked the capsule for hazards. Above, sailors from the USS Arlington approached the capsule in inflatable boats. Then, they towed it back to the ship's flooded well deck. When it comes to outer space, the U.S. military is constantly thinking and engineering new ways to explore and protect what's beyond our planet. From launching satellites off of military jets to Air Force and Navy personnel assisting future NASA missions, the U.S. government is clearly invested in what's beyond our atmosphere. and wants its brightest minds to team up and work together in order to reach the stars. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.